guys, welcome back to my channel. Now, this environment is a little bit different from where I'd normally film. I'm currently in the Philippines and I'm sat out on a balcony. There's traffic, there's dogs barking, insects, all sorts. I'm trying to catch the last bit of the light. So I'm hoping that you can see and hear me okay. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name's Sarah, I'm a doctor in the UK and I make videos about my life as a doctor and what I get up to in my free time. So today I'm gonna to talk about something a bit different for this channel, I'm talking about coronavirus. Now I'm sure that you have seen reports of it all over the news and today I wanted to talk about what is coronavirus, where does it come from and should we be worried about it? So the coronavirus is said to have come from a seafood market in Wuhan city in China. As of today, there are 846 confirmed cases with 830 of those being in China. I had to move locations already because I was losing the light, so I'm gonna to have to film this video really quickly. So what is coronavirus? Well, coronavirus is a type of virus and it's called corona because corona comes from the Latin for crown. And when you look at coronavirus under electron microscopy, it looks like a crown. Coronaviruses are found in humans, mammals and birds. And in your lifetime, it's likely that you will actually be infected by a type of coronavirus. Now there are seven types that are known to infect humans and of those seven types there are four which are known to just cause basically common cold symptoms. The other types of coronavirus that you may have heard of are SARS which stands for Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome and MERS which is Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. These are known to cause more severe symptoms than the other four types of coronavirus that can infect humans. New coronaviruses emerge from time to time and they normally come from cross transmission between species. Coronaviruses start to cause severe problems in humans when they cause pneumonia and pneumonia is a severe infection in the lungs which shows up on an x-ray. This is an example from the New England Journal of Medicine. This is a patient with known coronavirus and these are a couple of their x-rays which are shown three days apart. Normally you'd expect a lot more of the lung fields to appear sort of dark grey or black which would mean that they are full of air um, but as you can see in these pictures they are more white which represents fluid. Okay I've had to come inside because it was getting so dark I was losing the light I apologise that it's really echoey in here but also I was getting so many mosquito bites out there and I do not want to get dengue while I'm filming this video. So I was saying about SARS and MERS, there were reportedly 8,000 cases of SARS and of those 10% were fatal. MERS had a reportedly 2,468 cases and 851 of those were fatal, so a 34.5% fatality rate, which is really high. As it stands, the reported figures for coronavirus at the moment, this new strain has about a 10% fatality rate. Of those reported fatalities, the youngest person has been 48. All of the people who have died from the coronavirus have had other chronic illnesses. What is all the worry about? Is it actually something we need to be worrying about? Well, there are a few things that are worrying for this virus. One is that we know now that it can be transmitted from human to human rather than just from animals to human, which means that people traveling around the world may be able to pass it on to each other. The other worrying thing is that we don't know how long the incubation period is, meaning that we don't know how long the period is from the time when someone gets exposed to the virus to the point at which they actually show symptoms, which means that people can be exposed to the virus and therefore carrying and spreading the virus without realising it before they even exhibit symptoms of the disease. Another thing that people are worrying about is that there is no vaccine for this illness and also there is no definitive cure. There aren't any antivirals we can give that will work against this. So the only thing that we can do is give supportive care, i.e. giving oxygen and potentially intubating people, giving them respiratory support if they need it. Something else to consider is whether or not China are downplaying the severity of the disease and the number of cases that there actually have been. This was something that was criticised in the 2002 outbreak of SARS. China reportedly downplayed and underreported the number of cases that there were and has actually since admitted and apologised for this. Now this is something that people are worrying about. 
China may be knowingly or unknowingly underreporting cases. Therefore, the worldwide risk could be higher than we think. So what are we actually doing about the disease and the outbreak? So I actually lost a bit of footage here and this video is not going as planned so I'm just going to film a little voiceover. The WHO is the World Health Organization and they are the people who deal with public health emergencies and they give updates and uh, advice about how the world should deal with epidemics and things like that. So the advice that they've given is to reduce the severity of the outbreak of coronavirus. The idea is to interrupt person to person transmission and WHO have recommended that this is done by rapid identification, diagnosis and management of coronavirus. The second point is to get into contact with infected people. So identify and follow up contacts of those infected. And this is really important because when we think about the incubation period, that is the time at which someone gets exposed to the virus versus the time at which they actually start to show symptoms. So if there is someone who gets exposed to the virus at day one and then they actually start to show symptoms at day five, every single person that they've been in contact with within those five days, for example, could potentially be infected with the virus. The third point is in infection prevention and control in healthcare settings. And that involves wearing things like gloves and masks and aprons, personal protective equipment that will prevent spread from person to person. Previous coronaviruses have been spread by respiratory droplets. So that is particles that come from your nose or your mouth and they get spread through touching your face or breathing them in and actually cause infection within another person. The idea is that this new coronavirus is probably spread in the same way. Another tactic is implementation of health measures for travellers. So for example, they are using temperature gauges in airports to identify anyone who's got a fever and to make sure that they aren't travelling on a plane and infecting all of their fellow passengers. Another measure is awareness raising within the population, so putting out useful and accurate information, for example in the news, and making people aware of the things they can do themselves to reduce their risk of catching the disease. Hand washing is a really key part in stopping the transmission of disease and it's something that everyone can do from person to person to also healthcare workers. And finally, risk communication. And this is exactly as I talked about before with China downplaying the impact of SARS previously. What ha what's happening at the moment? Well, the city that this disease actually originated from, Wuhan, is on lockdown. It's been quarantined, they're stopping travel in and out of the city. What this actually means for the city itself is that the, in the healthcare, there are reports from the Washington, Washington Post that hospitals in Wuhan are completely overburdened. The staff are working at back-to-back -back shifts, they're running out of supplies like gloves, aprons, masks, and reportedly healthcare workers' hands are actually starting to turn white because they are bleaching directly onto their skin to try and stop the spread. So really, how worried should we be about this? I'm just gonna use some examples from statistics about flu, and I know that most of the people who watch my channel are based in the UK, so I'm gonna use some UK statistics. And these come from the Vaccine Knowledge Project, which is an Oxford University project. In the UK, roughly 600 people People a year die from the complications of flu and actually that is thought to be much higher in some years. Uh, in fact in 2008-2009 it was estimated that around 13,000 people in the UK died from complications related to the flu virus. So when you put it into context with previous SARS and MERS viruses, if you add up all of the number of cases put together of those viruses, whether fatal or not. It doesn't even reach that number. And that is hoping that China is accurately reporting the numbers and that they continue to put in place measures to prevent the spread of the disease as recommended by WHO. So I'm gonna wrap this video up here. I hope that you've 
found it useful. I've just given a few little tidbits of information about coronavirus just to kind of bring you up to scratch and hopefully you've learned something from this video. I've actually put all of the references down in the description box below if you want to do any further reading. I know that a lot of you who watch my channel are medical so you might be interested in reading a bit more of the medical information that is out there. If you're interested in seeing more of my videos, then have a look down below at my channel. You can hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification if you want to be notified each time I upload a video. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up because it lets YouTube know that you're enjoying my content. And guys, I've got loads of playlists. If you want to have a look at some vlogs, see what I get up to at work, then feel free to have a look at those. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.